Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Hey, today we wanted to come back and take a look at this dianthus that uh, we've kind of perennialized. This is uh, actually a, what, what old fashioned Sweet William, right? Yes, this is, you know, dianthus is the um, family name, but this is Sweet William, a biennial. And in its true sense, but we actually planted this back in the fall of 2020, right? Right. So. And um, it, you know, grew really well through the winter. And last spring, about this time, we had a bumper crop, kind of looks like this, mm -hmm. a bumper crop. And we harvested tons of bunches off of it. And they were really big, beautiful blooms, but, and they were just gorgeous. And it was a, it was a good season. But then we decided that they look so good. Yeah, even by, by the time we finished uh, harvesting, the, the mother plants still looked really healthy. So we just kind of left them and kept them watered during the summer. And then we fertilized them. Uh, with the Jadam uh, grass fertilizer and some JMS in the fall and then tried to do it again uh, once they kind of broke dormancy we hit it again a couple of times and then basically at this point uh, these guys have been growing on on uh, pretty much unassisted we haven't had to do anything uh, they've been so we haven't even had to water because of all the rain yeah and, and <laughs> but the base plants themselves really filled into the point where we didn't even get weeds on the we inside we have some weeds around the outside but, but not on the, not inside, on of the, the inside and the stem length as you can see is really excellent um they could they'll be so useful in bouquets but they have us what we're noticing is a little smaller head yeah the heads last year were maybe like more like about like that big and so these guys are maybe half size but actually for a bouquet that's probably a better thing i would think i think it's going to be a better thing and um they'll fit in better they won't be such a dominant you know, part in the bouquet, because a lot of times um, when they're they're so big, they take up such huge space, and then they're not really doing what they're really designed for, which is to be an excellent filler flower. Um, this is the super duplex group that was first last year and first again this year. And then we'll move over and show you the other two boxes. But first, we were, I was going to talk a little bit about Dianthus in general. It's not a super popular um, flower because it's bold colors. But it is a workhorse of a uh, flower to have in your mix. When we were doing the farmer's market, long time ago yeah about 10 years ago now <laughs> these were the first flowers to take off we they're kind of like bouquet glue right yeah <laughs> kind of like statuses <laughs> in the summertime now yeah this is kind of bouquet glue good point um when i made bouquets there was always several of these put in and we did what was called um a pick your own where we would have buckets of flowers kind of what they call now a bouquet bar and when we did that, um, every, every bucket they had um, Sweet William or the rest of the Dianthus in the future through the summer were always the first buckets to be empty because people just loved them, you know, as an addition to their bouquet. In the farmer's market, these were especially popular in the spring because they were so bright and bold. They're not pastel, although there's a few that are light. They're bold colors, and we just needed that after, you know, a long, gloomy winter to have something that was so bold and beautiful. Yeah, and that made a good offset to uh, some of the other things. Like uh, this time of year, we would have Dutch iris. Um, peonies. So, yeah, peonies would be coming up. Peonies are, I guess for us, um, I mean, besides the reds, most of our peonies are Pink. are, are kind of like on the, yeah, the, the blush Pink. side of the, of the so spectrum. So they, they needed this little bit of, you know, pop of color and these really fit the bill. The other thing that's an advantage to these besides that is I can pick these, you know, throughout the week as they become ready 
and store it in a bucket and store it in our cooler back here and they will hold. So you can pick them, you know, when they're at their optimum, even if you aren't close to a market, you know, you're three or four days from your market, you can pick these when they're um, perfect and store them and they will still last forever in a vase. They so are so long term in a vase. Didn't mean to over talk, but so how do you tell what's the optimum and maybe what's too far? I mean, well, the first thing you'll know when it's too far is it's always a center blossom will start to turn black. It, the very center will be the first one that you will know is dying and then the rest of them will follow suit. Sometimes you can even reach in and pull that one out. But right now they're you know, early to perfect. There's some that are, you know, a little small yet that you'll see in the video. And then others are big, big enough to pick. And then there's always a ton of um, extra blossoms um, that haven't even opened up that will continue the life. Right. So it what stage would be the earliest you could pick it then? Well, as long as you can see a couple of blooms on or that have opened up on it, you can pick it because, and a lot of other people pick when they're green because it's a nice green mm. additive to it too. So you could harvest all these ones that are like little green spikes. They have buds, buds haven't opened yet but you can harvest those and designers and florists will take those too because it's green and they they really like um, you know the green texture the fuzziness of each one so if they're green but there is no color to them at all they wouldn't open then later um, they would just they, stay that way they they sometimes they will open and sometimes they won't i i haven't found i if you want to guarantee that they'll open i always wait till there's a couple of blossoms that are open that makes sense so and then the other thing is this just keeps if you keep it harvested and watered and deadheaded if they get too far away from you and the cat <laughs> um these will just keep producing as long as the weather is somewhat cool these are a cool season um, flower, and it's like I said, it's a huge workhorse. I mean, yeah, we make a ton of money on these um, because they just keep going. It's like come and cut, come and cut, come and cut. Yeah, that and makes a lot of sense. And if you time the succession correctly, these will be finishing, and then your, you know, like the sweet series could be coming on that will follow this or and then the summer amazon series will come in after that and then i do another sweet series of fall colors in the fall that i'll start well i did already start ha huh? i already started those that will go in and those will be our fall dianthus and then we're gonna have to decide what we're gonna do with these well i I'd, I'd say you know just this is a great experiment maybe we should just say you know if the plants look healthy we clean them up, you know, when they're done, cut it down like we did last summer and uh, just kind of go through the process again and see, you know, okay, can we get a third year out of it? Um, I mean, so far, the second year still looks pretty decent. It looks like it's going to produce a lot. Yeah. I think, you know, this, this kind of experiment, at least for us where we are, we're zone 8B, kind of a maritime climate. We're about 60 miles from the Pacific Ocean. It's so a cool day. <laughs> we get, yeah, I mean, we get cool spring days, um, but, and we don't necessarily freeze really hard in the wintertime. I mean, as a norm, we it can happen. We had a couple of really serious days of freezing, but these plants didn't even get touched. Now, I mean, when we talk serious for us, we're talking, oh, we got down to like 25, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, we can have, you know, events in the wintertime where we'll, we'll go down to near zero for brief periods of time and and you know I, I don't know how that would affect something that's already like multiple years old but you know that's I'd say it's you know it's worth leaving it in we don't have a serious weed problem in here at all no it seems like it's you know the easiest maintenance you can find 
<laughs> there is one tiny little pest that bothers these. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's called the spittle bug. I don't know if you can see it. They form little white, like... Spit. Spit. <laughs> like bubbles of spit. And, and they don't last long, though. They They're... don't last long, but this is the crop that they go after. Yeah. I mean, they go after others, but this is the major crop that you have to spend some time... You know, but what's weird is they don't really, uh, I mean, they're they cosmetically damage, affected. Yeah, but they don't, there's they no don't. damage. It just yeah. looks ugly. And all we do is dip um, the head in a pail of water and it washes it all right, right. off. And but I'm thinking, you know, one thing that we haven't done yet is, is okay, let's, let's try some um, Jadam um, wetting agent and see if that actually, as an insecticidal soap type application, would you know, desiccate these guys out because they're pretty soft bodied. But so, I mean, as a way to, to try to, you know, um, maybe combat them, but I, I don't know. I mean, Cats. they're, they're not that big of a hassle other than, I guess it slows down from that standpoint. Yeah. The harvest is a little slower because you got to look at them all. But they only make... last about three weeks. If that, you know, by pretty much the first week of June, yeah. They're kind of like done. They're, you know, they're just there and then they're like, what happened to them? Yeah. <laughs> so. Other than that, um, yeah, we didn't really have slug problems either. I nope. mean, that showed any serious damage or anything. No, nothing's really be, um, eating the. The deer haven't bothered them. Yeah. I've even seen deer walk all by this. They'll go, eh. They don't, they don't seem to bother them. That's, that's a huge plus. I think our biggest problem has been cats. Yeah, they're they trying They like to, to play in us. it. Well, and no, what they'd like to do is they like to play and, you know. And they did work over the uh, other bed that we have where they, the um, messenger that we planted over over there. Yeah, that one um, I'm did not, not really, do well. I'm not impressed with it's, that one. This is the super duplex and the one that will be later is the messenger. The electron. Or electron, excuse me. The messenger was supposed to be we got a cat playing around yeah. our feet. <laughs> um that was supposed to be hey <laughs> um supposed to be earlier and it's a little bit earlier, but it didn't come in, didn't fill out, and, you know, we're just kind of disappointed. So maybe we'll just stick with the two boxes, the yeah. original duplex and um, uh, Electron, and leave, you know, free yeah. up another box for something else. Yeah, more ranunculus, right? Yeah. So, so anything more? I no, mean, I'm, it's I'm a, thinking this I was... I think it's a great crop to yeah. grow. I... My uh, my designers and florists have always loved every bit of it. Order all as much as we can produce, and so. And I think you know, from a, you know maintenance standpoint and growing it, uh, this seems easy. to work so far. I, I think it's just a matter of you know we just got to keep an eye on it and say, well, if the vigor of the plants you know start to really drop off or or we start losing plants, you know, um, then maybe it's time to redo it. So, you know, being a soft perennial, maybe we get three years out of it and maybe that's about as good as it goes. I don't know. But then that's, you know, makes it a, the, this very profitable crop. Oh, yeah. When you think about, you know, you invested seed in it and some and potting mix. And the seed mix. is really inexpensive. Well, it used to be. Well, but I'm just saying <laughs> you, you, you can get way more of this seed and yep. the um, electron seed then you can like even buy an Amazon dianthus. Right. I mean, because these are true biennials. Right. So yeah. they, you get lots of seed for not a lot of dollars. <sighs> yeah. And um, if you can extend it into multiple seasons, yep. I'd that's say, a win. I'd say the experiment was a success. Yep. And uh, so we're going to be harvesting a whole bunch here for over the next several weeks. So I guess what, we thought here is we would just kind of, you know, come back and take a look at this and say, because we talked about it last fall and um, it looks like this one, this one worked. Big time. Okay. <laughs> so thanks folks for joining us today on taking another look at this. And uh, as always, stay safe out there and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.